Okay, this is a video I will be demonstrating my knowledge about ability to recognize. This was just recorded yesterday, the whole thing. But a few days ago, there was a gentleman who befriended me uh, on a Facebook, right? And so this is the stuff you can make easily conclusion that I have a really deep knowledge about it. Even that, well, his sister is in Germany. Uh, and he alone came to Britain sometimes in 2002-2003. He is a journalist and he is related to the Kurdish politician. This is why for his family things opened up. There are numerous other Kurdish people just as what he told me alone. These are the words I repeat from his mouth. This is a really really nice gentleman. Um, and just to go on, because this, again, I could write a book about this case. Um, numerous other Kurdish people that suffer out there are not entitled to treatments like this. In 2017, when I was in Belarus, in Belarus, there were four sisters there with a brother. They were in Belarus already claiming a political asylum. They were in and out of Belarus. Uh, they came as a refugees already sometimes in, I estimate probably 2005. I even estimate. 2005, 2006, something like this. So you're talking about 15 years ago, actually, maybe even 2008, but at least 12, 15 years ago. I did not talk about any of that stuff for the obvious reasons that went on against me in Slovenia. Um, there was a whole lot more other stuff uh, that went on. Um, residents at Vitebsk, at immigration facility uh, that would come were entered the political asylum system at one point. Employees in Belarus, I have recognized, is are yet audience that I, you know, have to put online about the Belarus from Minsk to Vitebsk. And um, Vitebsk, actually, Belarus was one of the most. Uh, points, dots, on Amcult, MK Ultra map, I am acquainted with. Uh, there is like a huge, huge map of MK Ultra I carry with me in respect to Belarus. Um, back then in 2017, I suffered a tremendous hardship uh, and all kinds of issues in Slovenia from where I ran, literally for life. Today, however, I can return to Belarus and uh, do the whole thing, city and so on. Uh, it started in 95-96. Let's leave the Belarus for now and let's move on. I'm not going to say exactly like in Poland because it was a lot of political stuff that went on. Uh, but still, a lot. Now there was all kinds of stuff that went on in respect to Belarus. I don't know how much the people, how people would acknowledge me today is, yes. uh, but I'm only going to say to you something that I believe in a Belarus people. Uh, I believe in a Russian people. I don't believe nor in a communism, nor in a capitalism. I think that there are good capitalists out there, good-hearted people, and I know that every communist, if it's a real communist, is a good-hearted person. This is the stuff I know that nobody's going to take away from me at any point, at any time. Uh, and I believe that whether it's Belarus or Russia, uh, it's the people that have the right to be people, first of all. A dignity uh, For the people, what can I say? Uh, it's not a crime to see human being in a human being. Uh, this is the stuff basically I'm fighting for. 
this is the stuff I believe. I believe there is a, such a thing like beyond the political stuff. I, I have virtually declared a war on almost every nation in the world because of what Donald Trump have done to me, because of the mess he created. And I kind of realized that uh, there is a little bit more than just a political system we should belong to. I think that, first of all, we should see ourselves in is, uh, uh, is a human being. And this story, this is a start like this, because this story here, this is a story, this, what I'm about to demonstrate you here, depicts Germany probably the most in this whole picture. Uh, but then again, I want to distance myself from any kind of radical views against Germans too. Because, like I said, there was nobody on the map that I would not touch yet. Uh, with the anger issues, with the negative issues, because of what happened to me. Um, Germans were the last, but they did not get away either with it. And that is also thanks for most to Angela Merkel, because of what she did. Um, in this case, this gentleman I met a few days ago, in this case, um, yesterday I have completed with the proofs, our compensation that beyond any doubts um, confirms my knowledge of him and his family. Um, for what actually, when you're talking about Angela Merkel in Germany, this is the stuff I, I resented deeply. I, I, I have explained that in 95 and 96, Germans were the first to get into this. Uh, and they started to create between me and the real top neo-Nazis they even had in Europe, uh, such as the case with American KKK guy uh, and other neo-Nazis they had all kinds of terrorists. Uh, they would just, during MK Ultra, they would just take me to Europe and have me post with them and give me knowledge about them and updated me with them. And on the side, German government, uh, talking about Angela Merkel, would record videos about me being related to the Nazis, which then they have disseminated to minorities, to the people against whom they actually waged the war. And they did so, so those would alienate themselves from me. But before they did this, they have instilled some real hardcore neo-Nazi based fundaments in me. So I would serve the German uh, hypocrisy interests. And I don't like to use this German either. This is, uh, there is good people, there was really good people I met uh, in Germany during MK Ultra too, that actually even paid the price for my stuff too. So I don't want to go and use, I don't want to wage yet another war now against the Germans as a nation. There was a lot of enormous theft and crime against me, uh, but that still would not apologize the crime against the people from my side. Uh, I don't think so that I will bite that kind of apple either. So. This beautiful German people that did help me out, that wanted to help out, and just like Poles, Czechs, Russians, Belarusians, people in my country in Slovenia, they have somehow managed to see through this net a human being in me, more than uh, interest of their own. There was people that they would associate themselves for the sake of jobs, for the sake of um, businesses, investments, foreign money, uh, that would turn their backs on me. It was stuff like this. But also, even from that circle, many of them would not turn their back on me. And they would still climb their way back to me to say thank you, basically, by uh, interviewing me and uh, talking to me, so giving me the opportunity to obtain the proof about MKUltra. Such was also the case with the Germans 
uh, against school, whom I, uh, to be honest, I kind of declared vendetta, uh, retaliation, because of this, because of what I have mentioned a little earlier. But really, this is not going after the people. Uh, I think this is a biggest mistake, and I think this is exactly what Donald Trump. I think this is exactly what the top Nazis, fascists, count on. I, I think this is maybe also why I was uh, selected for this stuff, because I have a tendency, tendency that I would reserve enormous amount of uh, self-respect, uh, dignity for myself. Uh, at the same time, as much as I was kind, uh, I never hesitated to retaliate severely for someone that would take advantage of me, like blatantly, that would disrespect me, uh, hurt me, insult me. Uh, I always made sure that I would retaliate as much as I possibly could. And I think that this is exactly the kind of stuff that we are going through, that they want us to, uh, they're hurting us and they're hurting us through a variety of issues that include coronavirus, uh, there were financial crises that went on in 2000s, completely unreported and stuff like this, depression. Who knows how big that depression was, how great that repression was, uh, depression, financial, economic crisis. Uh, and along that, you're gonna have people like myself, you already have a bunch of thugs in the U.S. that managed to push American minorities and freedom-loving Americans to burn American flags and stuff like this. You can imagine what kind of uh, hypocrisy, uh, what exactly goes on. And they basically count on this kind of stuff. In the U.S., the, the U.S. flag is set on fire. The U.S. Constitution was set on fire. Uh, it just, by the people who use people like myself to, to create this this kind of crisis uh, and then basically push us by using us against one another and that's why I want to stop with this game I don't want to go on I don't want to go on with it uh, I do have a friends German friends and I want to keep German friends there's no reason for me to take radicalism and go against the German people. I want to stay open for the Germans, for the friendship. Um, maybe this picture right here that you see was one of the determining factors for my saying this during the video. Uh, on the left side you see it's a Kurdish girl. On her right side is a long time friend, German lady. Uh, the lady who went against the policy of, of, of residents around them, uh, who would not accept them in the environment just as, uh, you know, the case should be, just as a refugee, as a welcome. But she took this extra step. And I'm thinking about Beate Schapes' mother, who married a Romanian guy. Uh, Beate Schapes supposedly was a Nazi that uh, they jailed her, um, involved in a terrorist activities. Her father was Romanian, her mom was German. And uh, I'm thinking about exactly the same kind of German you see right here in front of me. There are good-hearted Germans out there, uh, on which unfortunately I also had impact, a really negative impact. Uh, and it's so not such an easy way out just through the hatred, just to explode in anger and uh, start to point the finger at someone. Uh, and I pointed finger. I have my uh, share of fault in it. I, I don't. I don't deny. I don't try to hide myself from it. I did. Uh, I, I would go from one extreme to the other. I, from the political systems to all the way to and politicians and nations and so on. I don't think this is the way to go. I think this is a tactic 
they're using to break us away from one another. I think that a Berlin game, and I'm talking about the Angela Merkel, I'm talking about the London Buckingham Palace, I'm talking about the Washington DC, I'm talking about those who commence this ripples of destruction. I think their agenda is to eventually turn us people against one another. On a first plan, their agenda was different agenda. It was, they, they also caused the war between Ukraine and between Russia, severe tensions between Poland and Belarus, revolution over there, bloodshed in Belarus and so on. This is actually, through the coronavirus and all the stuff, economic crisis as I stated, this is just a step up, step up, step up, which was commenced, this started with Orwellianism, Orwellianism game. That's when you have your state politicians engage in a crime, uh, like I stated, people profited from jobs to business opportunities, investments, government, uh, military technology even by circling around me whenever I was brought to Europe, whenever I was brought to a certain country uh, and engaging in this, whether that was individual or was a parliamentarian whatever politician that was, they, they obtained like a passport, like a green ticket free of any crime you commit, basically. Uh, amazingly, amazingly, was Vojislav Šešel released, that's a war criminal, a Serbian war criminal, a man who engaged in genocide against the Croats, against the Bosnian people, released from Hog, literally, through this very case. Amazingly, I'm going to say. So really, basically, you get a free ticket to a world of crime if they get you and they get a lot of people in Slovenia they get people they get people in they have this in, in, in Czech Republic had this Babich you have a lot of these people with secret banking accounts in Switzerland where the millions of dollars are transferred upon their completion of criminal transactions to the foreigners let's say uh, the taxpayers expense and they catch them it's not the problem with a police that catches them. The problem is then becomes it levels up to persecution office, which seems like does not know what to do with them. And it just goes on in this system. They hover inside of the justice system before between between the trials. Uh, basically accused of stealing millions and billions of dollars never facing any kind of real justice basically obviously evidently they have uh, agreements with opposition or, or if it's a uh, if it's a uh, opposition they have agreement with the uh, main party system that they are untouchable from whatever they do. So whatever comes along is nothing more for them than opportunity. And by doing that kind of stuff that started with the ripples through a small crime against me, uh, these people became, yes, the more crime they did to me, the more the more immunity they gained. Uh, yeah, the more crime they did to me, the more immunity they gained. The more I point in their crime, the more ability they have go on with a crime see themselves more related to the foreign politicians, business people, than their own people, because they're engaging in crime, knowingly so. So that's what I, that's what I call Orwellianism, basically. When your politician, when your individual saw nothing, heard nothing, know nothing, is more connected to the foreigners, those on behalf of whom theft of your property, public property is taking place uh, for the due to, if you want to call this, whatever you want to call this, silence code, um, 
Orwellianism is basically what I call it. And the more, the more time passes by, the more crimes, the more theft of the public property takes place, the more illegal, the more criminal transactions, because they are, they are simply immune from it. And the more they steal from you, the more they feel related to someone outside. This is the stuff the burning game started. It is the stuff that goes on. It is the stuff we, the people, whether you are German, whether you are French, whether you are British, whether you are Russian, whether you are Polish, whether you are Czech, it's we, the people, who have to detest to that, including Americans. We, the people, wherever you are, whether you are in Russia or the US or Germany or China, whatever you are, we have to unite against this kind of politics. We have to stop this. This is Orwellian game. This is Orwellianism. It's a world of corruption, criminality, which is taking us into the biggest World War conflict, into the World War III. This year, obviously, I don't actually have to demonstrate it, do I? If you pay attention to, on the left side is a Kurdish girl, on the right side is a German girl, but this, you have to admit me, the Kurdish girl is very beautiful. You have to admit me this. When I said this, I already have broken, uh, I already have created a serious problem here to the German government. When I stated this to them in 2008, if it was not in 2010, I'm not sure. It was a backlash that exploded from the German side against me. Um, it was actually in 2008 that I met her first. And for my stating this, expressing interest in her, it was a severe backlash uh, I faced. The German who befriended me here is a Kurd. This is her brother. This gentleman, like I said, was already in Britain sometimes in 2002, 2003. This is a journalist. It's actually... I will not give you, by reading this, you understand basically uh, exactly what, uh, what this is all about. He was in many locations throughout the Europe. Uh, and, of course, uh, he fights for his people. I did met a lot of people. Uh, of all the backgrounds that are fighting for the people and instead of that I'm saying for the people to unite uh, Kurdish people however are oppressed they are facing tough times Armenian people are oppressed they are facing tough times and these are things I believe that people whatever they are you know whatever they find themselves uh, just like the case was with this lady here uh, that you see here with this German lady uh, should recognize that uh, there is such thing that uh, as they look different, uh, whatever faith they are, Kurds are you know, of Christian and or Muslim faiths, uh, they have the right to exist in this world. The suffering they, they undergo is tremendous. It's, it's hard. Um, and it goes the same for the Muslim people, whether those are in the U.S., they can see what kind of prejudice goes against them. Uh, they should see themselves also in Kurdish people. They should, they should recognize the human beings in Kurdish people too. They should admit one another and live in peace and in harmony. It's not easy for anyone in this world today. I am from Europe, and as much as you might think, all the beautiful about the Europe and the U.S. where I spent no less than 13 years in which country also I am citizen. I became citizen, naturalized American in 2000. Um, you can see things are not easy for us either. We have a problems and if we as a people will not stop this, step together and create our own boundaries of what is humane, uh, we are going to face an ultimate extinction and the politicians started sure but it's going to be our fault they always told me all these politicians they always told me you don't have a chance you're not going to make it we always win and they do my god they do they strike with a pen with a strike of a pen they cause worse destruction death 
Uh, and the little man, what you see here, the only thing that is left to one is to either pack and run out of the country or take the gun in his hands to give his life on the front line for whatever. Okay, so as I continue down, I am gonna just scroll and then what you can do is you can as I scroll down you can just read our whole acquaintance as it is now what I want to do is I want to give you he came like with a question about what what how to get to I, I don't know Poland for uh, just showed me that he's going to go to uh, Belarus, that uh, he found me because I was all over the place and I had experienced all kinds of uh, issues like this, that, that uh, you know, yeah, really at one point I was actually even thinking about jumping across the fence and uh, climb the European Union border, the Polish side, uh, and run into the Belarus. It was like this in Terraspol. Uh, sometimes in 2017 it was like this too I did I did the stuff I have gone through is crazy but talking about his sister I caused him a troubles I caused him a troubles a reason for this are many there was another gentleman from Chechnya who looked just like him and whom I have also met again in um, in Grotnikach, in, in Loch, near Loch, near Zgirsh, actually, immigration center, he came, uh, he joined. And that one teased me a lot. It was all kinds of stuff that went on. It's not a bad guy, no way. But he was teasing me. I just say teasing me, I mean, use some bad words. Uh, it might be a children that are watching this. Um, and so, I have all kinds of feelings. Sometimes when I saw these people, this, this guy looked very much like, like the guy from Chechnya. Um, whatever, 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 whatever. I got sick of him. And then, then, then his sister popped up. No, his sister, his sister really was beautiful. This is a really beautiful woman you're talking about here. This is, this is his sister. You know, this is, this is why I had to advocate myself uh, in front of a German government actually they gestured that uh, that that I'm going to school them. You're going to school us if you're going to do this. This is going to be no good because they were making they were they created uh, they created their own world of you know whatever they wanted to portray um, reality to the world is you know. By the way, this is this man became his uh, her husband. This is actually, he was really jealous from the beginning. Uh, he had fallen for her big time. Of course, uh, he saw the competition in me, but once he realized I'm no longer dangerous, uh, he became, nah, he was, a, he was cool all the time. He was a teaser. He's a really nice guy, and now he's a proud father of what I think are three children. Okay, so this, both of them actually, this is why I showed the picture, because both of them, I have his permission to do this when I was brought back and they followed up on me because there was agreements uh, and these people hold on to me this family hold on to me uh, they wanted to see me back again for whatever reason is uh, they wanted to see me back again and German government would bring me back to them and it's also as I stated I was I was really I welcome the people with all backgrounds in this stuff, including Germans. Um, against whom I really started to build a severe, the most severe resentment sometimes in 2016. That's now been four years. This this almost goes to the fifth year. This is bad. Like I said, as a human beings, as a people, we have to be united. You have a good and you have a bad people wherever the hell you go. Uh, and so I don't think that's that's correct. I don't think that's right. A 
A German woman was like this. Uh, they were like shocked. What do you see about her? What do you see in her? Now I was jocked up. Now you, if you're a male, you explain to me what do you see in this? I have no idea what I possibly could see wrong in anything like this. Oh. They protested, I'm going to say, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely against everything. If I said something that would benefit one side, uh, it would be immediately a protest that would follow up against me on the other side. So I never possibly could, whatever the hell I would do, uh, I could not satisfy all the sides, right? There was no way. All right, now, as the conversation goes on, the German claims that his sister came there in 2017 in Germany, and he is just about to go um, and leave his country. Now, at this point in time, I am not sure uh, yet. You know, when you, when you come across the person, it takes you some time to process the, the, the things and so on. Now, I know that I did met him somehow. I'm just thinking where, how, uh, I'm trying to pull the data out of my information, out of my head, to recall when, how I have met this man. And he will not admit. And I'm thinking about how to help him actually more than anything else. So you can go, later on you can go slow time and you can read so you can see how the MK Ultra works. But the whole thing became for me personally, it became like, um, by the way, I was extremely, extremely, extremely nasty to this man, just as I stated, just to finish that sentence. Um, for a reason for that, I already have explained. I was taking him seriously, and I was not taking him seriously. Um, when he introduced me to the sister, I did not know three <coughs> about what went on. I, I have just fallen for his sister under MK Ultra, and um, that one had, in 2010, invited in Germany. The, the German government brought her mom, her, and another sister or two, whatever it is. The family came from the Kurdistan, and I have rejected them. I have rejected her sisters and mom. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to know it. I just wanted her and this is actually what hurt her feelings and shortly after that she got uh, the Kurdish guy meaning that her sisters that he's got more sisters I don't know what how many he stated they're nowhere even near as beautiful as she is this is a really beautiful woman in my eyes so physically um, I would go and I was a, such a well, I'm going to use the word swine, really. I really was a swine. That I would go and I would whisper him, even a real swine I was under MK Ultra, I would really, really know how to get you. And now if you wanted to help me out and you have a swine like this, jerked up, whispering you to you, let's say, why didn't you just give up on your life? Why didn't you just, as a Kurdish, why didn't you just give in and surrender yourself and just... I did this stuff. I did this stuff like this. I would, I would study person. Uh, if the person was teasing me or was doing something to me, I would find counter arguments that you would not expect from the person who was dropped up. I was actually abusive. I'm not denying this kind of stuff, and I really was like this to him. This is why you have read before that a little earlier that, that he is completely surprised about my views. Yeah, my views are very different in reality from uh, from MK Ultra because during MK Ultra you can do to person anything you want to do. This person who is whoever is subjected to MK Ultra, this person cannot defend himself. You don't understand. The person that is in front of you has nothing that can defend himself with. You are drugged up. That's all you are. And as such, you are a really a human toy. A live toy is what you are. Just like um, some came to conclusion. And you can do with that person whatever the hell you want. But there is one thing you have. You have intellect. And with that intellect, you can actually 
if it's properly timed, if you manage to observe the people around you, whether they face the crisis, certain issues, you can create a very, very severe argument and you can hurt their feelings. And over the years, I became a real specialist in this. Uh, over the course of, um, this started for me in 95, and so you're talking about 50 years, uh, 50 years time down the road, basically, when this Kurdish guy, I'm going to say, came in my hands. I hurt his feelings badly. Another guy that I targeted was in Grotnikov, a Kurdish man they had in Grotnikov, but that one was from Syria, who had the glasses, uh, and these glasses barely stood on his face because they were broken and stuff like this. And we had a class of Polish language, and it was just a matter of time when I would strike at him with, with issues and make fun of him and stuff like that. It was all kinds of retaliations and stuff like this. Uh, but really, the person that is drugged up just has nothing that can help him out, that can defend himself with. Maybe the worst issue that I have faced during MKUltra, I will say, is whenever I was told I'm not taken seriously. This, if, if somebody told me that, that, that they're not taking me seriously, like let's say a general major Paul Eaton did, this is the stuff that in, I'm going to say, this is the stuff that that broke the hell out of me. This is the stuff that angered me so badly uh, that uh, then I was just really rolling inside of me what what issue I would find, how I would, what, what I would do to, to hurt himself, you know. But again, you're nothing. When you're dropped up, you're just a piece of meat on a table. I am surprised and I am thankful very, very thankful to this man that he eventually find, found his way back. I think this might be uh, related to United Nations, actually, this guy. I'm not sure. Um, as you see, he would not give me a clue no matter what I would do. He would not give me a clue no matter what. He would not admit anything. But my memory is crystal clear. My memory is just a super, super crystal clear. But my memory is just super, super crystal clear. Uh, I cannot make no... Uh, I don't go wrong. Once I, 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 I get a track, then I just go and I just... Uh, there is no escape, basically. Yeah, he would go with us to Belarus. This man was not related to the Belarus. He did not go to the Belarus. But, uh, really, um, in 2013, uh, actually, he would start to go to Belarus. They would get him. Because when he got involved in my case, whether you were a journalist or something, all of a sudden you would get a free pass to the, the deepest background of government, journalism, government-related services. And this is, he got involved in it for his own people, uh, and uh, he ended up even going with me to the Belarus, going with us to Belarus and taking me to, to Belarus. Um, Indian people uh, refer to that as a handler. I don't know about that kind of stuff. Um, I, I'd rather see people like this as a friends. I, I don't... Uh, First of all, I was always a peaceful person. I never gave, unless they pushed me to some limits or something, any kind of resistance to anybody. Everybody felt really comfortable around me. And you're talking about the ladies. Uh, you're talking about even ladies basically handling me like a dog on the leash, on, her, on their own, basically. It was like this. It never was really any danger to, to have me. This was like the most peaceful person you possibly can have. Uh, but if, yeah, they were doing the stuff like this, if they were teasing me and stuff like this, uh, then, you know, they became my casualties too. Uh, then I would hurt. And of course, they would hurt me more then. They would come with all kinds of scenarios and so on. So this stuff here, ladies and gentlemen, was recorded today on October the 12th, 2020. 
and there is no freaking way whether you are police whether you're from United Nations but just by watching this kind of stuff that absolutely in any way that you can say that let's say I would not know what exactly I am talking about you got to admit I have it up to the last millimeter uh, even in respect to this issues this case whether you like it or not is going to have to be recognized as a factual case by the international community and that's what I want I want this case to be recognized by international community I uh, I was thinking about all that stuff uh, and uh, I deserve it this to be recognized by international community uh, I want this to be recognized by international community I don't want this it was some kind of uh, stuff that they would recognize me like uh, like individual state that would come and they would recognize this no uh, the thing about it is I had all kinds of problems with all kinds of states uh, including Slovenia that you're not gonna think that that here was just something like this I had war going on here I have deeply resented the people the Slovenian people for this stuff because they would not see the human being in me uh, in oftentimes it was a Polish it was a Czech people that they, they, they were more related to me as a human being they were more related to me as they liked me they loved me uh, than my own Slovenian people and I'm not saying that Slovenian people did not relate it themselves to me they did they did they did the new generations the younger people especially did I am surprised pleasantly surprised what I encountered here in, in Slovenia upon my return here they did they did the younger generations they started to did uh, older generations I'm not gonna hide I hurt their feelings too this is my country I am from and I understand I understand these things I do understand the least what I understand are the people who promised us a change a different something different a change and they had the worst paths one possibly can imagine paths of corruption crime uh, lavishness an expense of the taxpayers, myself, uh, that is actually taking our country down the road of the total moral decay into a totally wrong path of the Nazism, of the fascism, basically. Something that our people, especially along other Eastern European nations, have paid dearly, a tremendous price, 75 years ago when they were literally trying to obliterate us from the face of the earth uh, and so I know I deserve it in a way I deserve it I know that it was a lot of because of the amount of politicians because of international community because of you involved in this stuff they perhaps might have not even been capable to do anything about it because it was international also society that insisted also on these issues uh, my spiny issues were well known about all the way to Hollywood, all the way to the USA. The most prominent people in the US on both sides of the political spectrum knew about my spine, what's going to happen with one. Not that they would wish for causing me hurt, damage. Uh, they, they, this was like a, something that I think that caused another problem to them because they they started to melt in their brain how to help me out Democrats uh, the real Democrats and there was just no way out to help me out because it was just the crime was so severe so advanced that there was just uh, really I started to believe there was no way out of it so I think that the right thing for this thing would be to just get uh, from everybody because also everybody was involved in it it was not only Slovenia it was everybody involved in it it's time to, to say to admit about what happened here I lost 26 years of life on a total stupidities but I think if you're gonna stick to my what I told you about today what they're trying to do with us uh, we actually will stop this World War 3 uh, and on time prevent another bloodshed that took place
probably about 10 times worse than what took place 75 years ago. All right, thanks for watching this video. Uh, yeah. Mister, you have a good looking wife. That's all I have to say. Thanks for watching this one, recorded on October 12, 2020. Okay, this thing here, what you are seeing here, this is a her and her husband's place. Uh, this is when they move in together. Uh, he was actually the one who got a place, and then she would move with him um, sometimes, I think, in 2010. That's what I believe. Uh, it's an apartment building. This is apartment building that you are seeing here. Um, you would actually oh let me let me just draw you a real fast a plan of this apartment building um, yeah it's it's actually not going to do much. This is a quite a beautiful uh, apartment building he moved to, I remember. Um, I, let's just suppose that uh, this here, this would be the floor as you would go um, um, she lives on the floor she would have like this uh, let's say if this was an entrance uh, to her unit If this was an entrance to her unit, into her apartment, let's say, if you would enter through here uh, into her apartment, um, then the wall of this apartment that uh, both moved in together, uh, it would be like this, then a wall that would be located uh, inside of the apartment. It would be, it would be like this this is this is what it is she would be like if you would look at the profile of uh, of the apartment floor she would be located like there would be like maybe I'm gonna say um, another yeah there would there will be other entrances to her left as you would enter through the door therefore there will be there will be uh, another uh, at least two like this apartments to her left side what is on the right probably I would say also maybe something yeah something like this and as you would enter inside the the wall that you see right this the lady that you see right there uh, this lady here The neighbor, the German, the German neighbor, the German neighbor is actually uh, the neighbor from from the from the apartment building. I think she is, and uh, I am trying to picture where exactly she would be. I met all these neighbors, these Germans inside of this apartment building. They're really good people, actually. They, 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 they well accepted them, all right? It's not only that she was, but she was the first one. She was just the one, the first one she was, uh, that came to greet them, to meet them, to accept them. This is just a really, really very accepting, soft-hearted German lady here we are talking about. I like it very much. Um, and if you want to talk about her first place, right, where she would be 
uh, let's just say where she lived at first um, that place did not look that good okay now you're talking about let's say apartment building like this uh, of which entrance was something like on this side of the building I'm gonna show you it will look something like something like it was like something like this I think the entrance was somewhere here like this on this side of the building like this you would go inside and then you would go you would go up like this geez I think I'm not I'm not I'm not completely hundred percent sure I had a feeling that it was like that, that it would be situa situated like um, just here like on this side like I think even on it on, on a maybe on this side of the building like this her apartment unit was located this is what I think right so so basic is what I think it was uh, you're talking about 2008 up to 2010 something like this with this is where first uh, apartment building her first apartment building looked like this and it was a dark building it was not bright or something like this it was like not a beautiful building it was okay inside but it was not so beautiful but her new place was like more uh, I think more positive but definitely the building where she moved in in I would say 2010 uh, with her uh, husband a boyfriend who became her husband was like uh, it looked to me like a newer building I remember they were like um, when they showed me uh, I, I said to myself this is this is good looking I was really happy um, to tell you the truth it, it looked really positive to me I was I was quite happy for both of them actually I like I like the boyfriend because I, I, I made a conclusion that he was just uh, you know a teaser which he was he liked to tease me he always played some kind of a negative dark person but it really was I think he's a softy actually and I think it's an apartment building like this and then there is another uh, building like this and uh, there were like two buildings and uh, it appeared like in 2010 as if you're talking about like really newer buildings like newer buildings uh, what you see here in this picture here this uh, this is actually I am actually even thinking about something else right now that I am really really not certain of uh, it's a possibility a very very strong possibility that the two moved to another city that she was uh, the, the two left in away from the main city because I remember with her going in a city with a train it was always with a train we would go with a train uh, I remember I would sit on a train and stare at her uh, she would have me sit over there next to her uh, and basically I was really really pleased by just sitting there and staring at her and very very not unhappy I became once the boyfriend joined I think it was a train I think I'm pretty sure that we would go with a train uh, that actually completely spoiled the whole picture to me <laughs> MK Ultra picture is what I mean but this is a really beautiful couple I think they're really cool people so I definitely wish them uh, both of them all the best my saying this my saying this uh, this German neighbor that you see here uh, she is um, she is yeah I think that she is um, I would say that she is uh, not that I would say this is a fact this is from the new apartment basically and this is already when they had they had they always had this birthday parties in this place so that means to me they're still staying in the same place because I know this wall you know I see you know, I recognize this this wall did you see here it was always the wall all through I, I remember that um, oh, let me see something else here. If this can be seen. I, I, you know, that's all basically I can come to. And this is just a really, really detailed, a really, really good description of 
basically a factual as it gets from MK Ultra Memories. A really, really good, I would rate one as a really crystal, uh, totally, totally, totally irrefutable factual witnessing of MK Ultra victim. Thanks to the good people that, that you see here who they would not give in on me no matter what. I have no idea why they would not give in on me no matter what. I have no clue. Uh, I think they liked me a lot. Anyways, I think there is more to the people than just the politic. They actually go under the Berlin's jurisdiction, but, you know, just like Polish people go under the Warsaw jurisdiction, uh, but I think, in my personal opinion, there is more to the people than just political jurisdictions. Uh, I think there is something humane about people. I think there is something that you know, is out there that actually connects us. There is a little bit more than just the politics out there. So, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. This here, what you see, according to the Belarus, this was the last uh, newly opened, uh, maybe newly opened, I have no idea. I don't even know where the hell this is. Belarus is right there. Uh, this is the last uh, point, and it definitely was remodeled. Um, we were here before. Uh, if I go there, I can tell you more. I'm also going to tell you that behind this house, um, I think there is another one. I am not completely sure, but I think there is more. This was built in 2013, I think. The last immigration, uh, the last where you would go to the Belarus or in Poland, uh, this is on the Belarus side, uh, the last uh, inspection point, uh, immigration, there is a road behind there, make no mistake, even if he said that uh, this, you cannot go, yeah, you can go with a car, of course you can go. Uh, but this is the last modernized, I would say, crossing. Uh, in Belarus, uh, really, really, I remember this house. Uh, it was a brand new one. Uh, I was really, it was actually really impressive. But you know, I saw so many things impressive that I didn't, you know, you lose the track of what the hell impressive is, really. Uh, I think if I would go there, I would tell you exactly what was there back then, what the, the hell that looks like before. Uh, I know that they had me there before that. I know we would go through here before many times uh, prior to this modernization. I think I would give like 2011, between 2011 and 2013 modernized this place. I think 2011 I would go, 2013, 2011. Wherever this is in the Belarus. Yeah, I was in Belarus in and out more often like like a ghost back and forth not only that I moved but all kinds of government agents from all over the world they moved back and forth in out of the European Union back and forth government workers have a clearance uh, there is such thing as a high clearance clearance that allows people to move in back and forth as pleased that's all I wanted to say for this one